Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Peninsula VFL Update. I'm Jonty Ralph Smith, with me is Michael O'Neill. Good to be here Jonty, as always. And as always we'll review Frankston's round against Sydney, we'll preview Frankston's next round and we'll talk about other results around the VFL. I think the first thing we've got to talk about though, like I said, is Frankston's win on the weekend. It was a comprehensive 28 point win over Sydney at that Avalon Airport Oval. We probably weren't sure what the spectacle was going to be like on a Sunday night, but it was a great spectacle and Frankston probably deserved to win by more if they capitalised on their inside 50s and were a bit more accurate. Yeah, and they, they turn after nine games at five wins and four losses. How exciting that is for Frankston yeah. supporters and probably for VFL supporters in general. Uh, if anyone had have predicted that at the start of the year and they're back in Frankston, are back in the eight. Yep. Uh, yeah, just just such such positive news for the footy club. You mentioned Sunday night, a 6.30pm time slot. It, it got down to about seven degrees oh. down at Werribee. But it was colder a, than that, I reckon. It was a terrific spectacle. have to point out that the Sydney Swans VFL team was hamstrung yeah. by about a dozen players being stuck in Newcastle still because of COVID regulations. But they had uh, eight or nine quality AFL-listed players, guys like Hayden McLean, Louis Taylor, who won the NAB Rising Star a number of years ago, Ryan Clark, uh, Callum Sinclair. They all performed really well, but Frankston... Sort of got their mojo back, I think, Jonty, a little bit. Their DNA of tackle pressure and the like, and, and that sort of showed out over the course of the day. Uh, you mentioned they maybe could have won by a little bit more, but the uh, the accuracy curse continues uh, with, with the Frankston players, but they got the job done. A 28-point win uh, was well-deserved. And you touch on Sydney, probably Colin O'Reardon's another one of those players who played really well. But if we look at Frankston in a bit more depth and maybe start with the forwards, you touched on their tackling pressure and their DNA being back. It was good to see that Mosquito Fleet being back together. Blake O'Leary, Jack Mint, the Ashcracker, Josh Stern all sort of had a contribution on the game. Yeah, well, for those who, who tuned into the coverage, we spoke about Frankston took a different forward structure in. Liam Reedy made his debut as a 204-centimetre, 96 kilogram behemoth up forward and and only one game back at local after a long layoff with um, injury uh, he's one to look forward to but I thought he competed really well on the night didn't get a lot of touches but he did what he needed to do yeah and that's something Frankson's been looking for early in the in the game the first quarter particularly you mentioned I read and he dominated in the back line yeah uh, and Sydney were able to take a number of intercept marks but after quarter time they did well so you, you had a situation where you had Reedy, Liam Reedy as a tall, Josh Begley, who was yep. actually strong on the night. Bailey Lambert didn't play. He, he's the logical other aerial threat up there. But then they unleashed the full mozzie squad, the four of them, and uh, Josh Stern led the way with five tackles. But it was the pressure inside uh, forward 50 that was so noticeable, and it made it difficult for Sydney to clear their half-back line uh, in the last three quarters. In the midfield, Nathan Freeman collects them as he always does. He got 45 possessions, and Jackson Voss, I thought, was really good on a wing. Yeah, uh, uh, Nathan Freeman with the 45 touches. I just don't know how he's not become... He's dropped off being your favourite player, John T, and now Bailey Lambert and Jackson Voss uh, uh, have got your attention. Jackson Voss, where's that come from? Well, you mean, you like to mention him all the time. But Fr- Freeman, like, I think sometimes we overlook just how prolific he is in and finding the football. Yeah. So uh, is it all games but one this year he's had... All games but one, he's been over 40, and the one that he wasn't was the loss to Collingwood. He's still got 27. Yeah, and yeah, it's just an incredible... Um, just an incredible sequence of possession-getting games. So uh, well done to Nathan Freeman. He's just going terrific. Josh Newman yes, and yep. Cotton Riley have become real talisman of the midfield, yep. and they're... If Frankston are looking for a physical effort, those two are leading from the front. Josh Newman is just uh, he's so sacrificial in the way he plays. Yeah. Um, he, he and Connor Riley had so many efforts around the ball. And Mitch Cox is one that I think also deserves mention through the midfield. He's doing a lot of work defensively, and I noticed early on the weekend he was helping out his defenders uh, really well. Speaking of defenders, Will Arthurson, and you say I'm a fan of Jackson Voss perhaps, but I know you've become a fan of Will Arthurson. He's put a nice solid block of work together and that probably came to a four on the weekend in defence. Yeah, he's, he's finding a really nice balance between uh, coming off his man and intercepting. And he, again, on the weekend, he took a number of intercept marks. Left footers always look uh, yes. natural. He's, yeah. a, he's a beautiful kick as well. So uh, he works really hard, Will Arthurson. So he's getting the rewards uh, that he deserves. Big Max Williams and... 
Uh, Billy McCormack. Billy McCormack. I got, Blake name, McCormack. I got his name right this week. Those two alternated in, in the job on Hayden McLean, mm. who's been really, really strong at AFL level this year, and I think um, he, he's going to have a long AFL career. In the second quarter, McLean kicked two goals in three or four minutes. Yep. He threatened to be the difference between the two sides, but between the two of those guys, uh, they did a terrific job. Max Williams particularly put a lot of early body work into McLean, uh, which stopped him getting a run at the ball in the second half. If you look at some other VFR results around the around the grounds from last round, Geelong got the job done over Essendon, as you probably expected. Charlie Constable, we talk about Nathan Freeman delivering for Frankston. Charlie Constable keeps delivering for Geelong. And that game, I think it was quite tight, about four goals apiece, and then Geelong uh, ran away with... Or maybe maybe that was the previous yes, week. Yes, I was going to say, I don't think... But that's... anyway, Geelong had this, this habit of um, uh, just really putting the foot down at GMHBA Stadium yeah. and won by 90-odd points, and it was a... Um, a, a, a little bit of a time to cash in for all players. What you had for Oscar Brownless, um, son of Billy, he's put a nice six weeks together and, and he might slot into the AFL side for his debut before the end of the year. Darcy Lang, another who kicked five for Geelong. Box Hill got the job done easily over Gold Coast, 111 to 39. And Co- that must be the reason why Sam Mitchell got the job. <laughs> had to get that in there? Yeah, no. Um, Coburg, first time back at Priana Park and how fitting is it that Tom Wilson leads from the front and Sam Lawson as well plays well in their 27 point win over Carlton yeah um, and got back on the winners list uh, great to see I saw the video with Seb Spagnuolo um, going through the new facility great news for, for Coburg the Bull Ants over Richmond that's a surprise result of the round the Bull Ants now two in a row 13 point winners uh, just this should be becoming a great story the Northern Bull Ants and uh, uh, probably an even more meritorious win this week Yep, Casey over GWS. Casey lost to GWS by one point. Yeah, the first loss of the year for um, the Casey Demons, young Jake Bowie, son of former Frankston and St Kilda player Brett Bowie, going really nicely. He'll debut soon, but a bit of a luxury for GWS. They had Stephen Canilio, the AFL captain, playing in the VFL, and then they had the Twin Towers up forward in Jesse Hogan and... Uh, Jake, Jake Riccardi. Riccardi. Yep. So, so they managed to take advantage of that. Pretty good game down there at Casey. Collingwood are starting to build a nice season together. They got up over Sandy by 18 points. Yeah, the Craig Black and the White, they're going very well, Collingwood VFL. So um, uh, Huss White, again, a, a strong performer. We all know uh, that name on the peninsula. Sammy Fowler chipped in for a couple of goals. And they've got a plethora of young AFL talent hitting the scoreboard. Ginevan or Ginevan. Jack Ginevan. Uh, he, he kicked four goals. He, he might get a bit of a look in before the end of the year as well. Footscray getting the job done over North by nine points. Probably not the margin you would expect. And then, like we've touched on, Frankston getting up by 28 points in the Sunday night fixture. If you look at the ladder, Footscray still undefeated atop the ladder and Southport are 7-1. and one. Yeah, it's becoming quite congested at the top there. Uh, the, the top eight or nine are sort of separating yep. themselves away. Werribee's surprise loss, yeah. um, I think that hurts their prospects of a top four finish. Uh, but as, as we mentioned, the, the best news of all is seeing Frankston back in the top eight in a 22-team competition. Where be a 4-3, and three, they're 10th. If you move down the ladder, Box Hill 7-2, and two, Casey 6-1, and one, Geelong 6-2, and two, Willie 5-1, plus the draw with Richmond. Collingwood are 5-2, and two, and like you say, Frankston round out the top eight. Yeah, it's, it's becoming uh, and it'll be inter- it's becoming a tight competition at, at, at both the top and bottom of that um, top eight, mm-hmm. uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see how the rest of the season pans out and whether there's any decisions from the AFL around length of season and some teams have played two more games than the others that, um, it, yeah. so it skews the ladder a little bit we'll it'd be interested to see what the final makeup of the season is going to be and whether they need to move to a match ratio mm-hmm. component of the ladder to, to, defer, to determine the finalists the other interesting thing to note from a Frankston perspective is that Port Melbourne are 22nd on the ladder they're last on the ladder one and six so not what you would expect from Gary Ayres men we'll preview that match on the other side of this break but first let's get a word from our sponsors. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solar Heart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get solar heart. 
More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spithire for 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic. We make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Brighton Auto is your Bayside and Peninsula automotive one-stop shop. This all-in-one award-winning Mitsubishi, MG and Sanyong dealership is also offering Holden certified parts and service. They have a huge range of new, demo and used vehicles plus factory trained service technicians. Your proud RPPFM station sponsor Brighton Auto will also ensure your dream car is well within reach and kept in great hands. Why not visit brightonauto.com.au or find them at 67 Nepean Highway, Elstonwick, LMCT 10680. Welcome back to the Peninsula VFL update and thanks for those messages from our sponsors. Uh, John T, probably worthwhile us uh, talking about the Frankston women's team's performance on the weekend. Unfortunately, uh, going down to the Eastern Devils with a significant loss. Unfortunately, but it's a result you expect. The Eastern Devils are a really experienced outfit. Obviously, the margin blew out to 81-1, to 1, so you know Frankston would have hoped to have been a little bit closer than that. Eastern Devils extending their lead at every change, kicking goals in every quarter, weren't able to stem the flow. Were the Franks and Dolphins, but they've got a winnable game this week against Mount Eliza. So that's Maybe, John T, they were just saving their energy for the big occasion this week with um, Shani Layton. Shani Norder, yeah. Coming Sh in. Knee, yes. Shani Norder coming into the lineup against Mount Eliza. So that'll be good down at Skybus Stadium on Saturday. The exact time of that, I don't think, is known yet. Yeah, still, still waiting for that. But she's one of my favourite sports yeah. people in general. If anyone gets a chance to read her book, it's a really, really interesting insight into her experiences ac across netball and football. And clearly someone who's still putting back into the community, uh, grew up in Bond Beach and, and putting back into the local community. I know speaking to Lee Haslam and Greg Hilton, they're really excited that she'll get down and I'm sure the girls will enjoy the experience of her being able to run out with them. So hopefully they're able to get their third win of the season. We know last time they played Mount Eliza, they went down agonisingly in the last quarter. I know you watched that game and Franks were on top for a lot of it, but just weren't able to hold on. Yeah, and I'll have to say, uh, we spoke a little bit in the in the men's VFL coverage about the Northern Bull Ants in their first year, they've had a couple of wins. Mm. I see a real parallel. Like It's quite exciting watching Frankson's women's team evolve in their first season, and having two wins is an incredible effort. So looking forward to the continuation of that journey in their first season. Frankston men's also get to play at Skybus Stadium this week. They're against Port Melbourne, as we touched on before the break, on Friday night under the lights. So it'll be a good spectacle, and Frankston... Possibly will go into as favourites. However, obviously Port Melbourne have had the wood over them in recent times. Yeah, they have, and and Port are slowly getting some players 
uh, back. They've been riddled with injury across the course of the year. You would never have expected them to be um, at the foot of the VFL ladder, uh, but they've been hard hit by. They've still got loads and loads of talent. Uh, Eli Templeton uh, is probably their most prominent player. It was spoken about as a draft, mid-season draft prospect, but they've got lots of talent of similar sort of players. Um, Harvey Hooper's a guy across halfback who I really rate uh, very highly. Uh, they've probably been a little bit undermanned in the big man stakes, yeah, yeah. Um, and probably for, for them this week, um, maybe that gives them a little bit of a better matchup given Frank Sinant, um overly equipped with tools forward or back, but it will be an exciting game. I'm looking forward to seeing crowds back on the terrace. Jonty, mm-hmm. the Skybus Stadium atmosphere, particularly on the Friday night games, has been terrific this year, uh, and I'm sure everyone will be itching to get back back to the ground. So uh, should be at a 7.30 7 at this stage yeah. kickoff. So um, get get on down, get your tickets. Um, obviously, online is always the easiest, but get your tickets in. Uh, there's President's Functions functions downstairs and upstairs i think so um it's building as a nice game but mm. to, to get into the the Feel nitty-gritty it. of the f- football stuff it's a really important game for frankston to consolidate their position in the eight so especially it, when you consider that you look at the other teams that are around them a lot of them have played one less game i know gws are below them they've played the same amount of games other than that a lot of teams around them have played that eight games instead of the nine games and internally they won't be talking about finals but anything yeah. could happen with this season and so banking wins is really important it'll be fantastic a fantastic um franking of a improved season for frankson to be pushing for a finals position late in the season uh if so we look at selection selection yeah. wise um we, we mentioned earlier about how they went with a different forward structure if bailey lambert's uh fit i yeah. think he had a nick in the calf yeah. a couple of weeks ago uh, he's an automatic inclusion, and that would give them uh, another threat alongside Josh Begley and, and Liam Reedy. They've got some nice depth that's either been out injured or, or um, has been omitted in recent weeks. Players such as Kai Owens, uh, Tommy Small from Analyzer, Riley Darcy. Uh, another one I want to ask you about is probably Jai Florent. He's one that was emergency on the weekend, so that probably indicates he's getting quite close. He plays for... Or Mentone Grammar or Old Mentonians. Old Mentonians yeah. Um, lightly framed wingman, brother of Ollie Florent. Yeah, and we were lucky enough to have a chat with him at, yeah. at the game on Sunday. Uh, Frankson have played 38 players in the seniors already this year, which is quite a high number. So, despite the fact that they've got an improved win loss record, they're getting a look at all their list, and it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, him selected in the next week or two. Albeit there's players like Angus Styles and maybe even Tyler Young. Mm. Um, who have got seniority over those younger guys that, that could be uh, legitimate options to come into the side. I know you mentioned Bailey Lambert as being an automatic inclusion, which he is after, obviously, we saw him dominate the first two or three weeks of the season, but would you be changing that forward structure much after we saw them apply so much pressure on Sunday night against Berwick? Oh, I'd still keep the... Um, that's why they pay the big bucks to the coaches, John T. I'd, just get, I'd get everyone in the side and work out for someone else. But I'd keep the four smalls in. Um, yep. I, yep. I, although, if they had to push one out, um, Lambert still provides enormous forward pressure. But yeah. but I think they've found a better um, a, a better forward mix um, on Sunday that, that overcomes some of their problems they've had previously. Um, I, I don't know, Lambert, he's elite. So, yeah. so you just have to find a way to get him to the side. It might mean that um, you continue with that Mitch Cox, Josh Begley rotation, um, yeah. yep. um, and that allows you to have the three smalls alongside them as well. So. John T, uh, time to move on to what I know are our viewers' favourite uh, part of the segment, which is when I give my selections for the upcoming games. And I think for every upset in the last three weeks, yeah. you've heard it exclusively here on the VFL Peninsula. So you're bragging about saying that the Bullants were going to get up over Richmond, but all you actually said is it's a possibility. So that isn't actually tipping them as a chance. But are you tipping Port Melbourne an upset or are you sticking with Frankston? No, I'm tipping Frankston to beat Port. Uh, Southport will get up over Brisbane? Comfortably. Willie are playing Geelong at Willie. Yeah, I think Geelong still have a very strong list. Willie don't lose at home very often. It'll be a, a lot closer game than you yeah. might well, expect. I think it'll be a bit of a, a, a tight slog. It'll be a tight game. Willie will set it up that way. But Geelong to get over with their talent. Giants, you would expect to get up over the Suns. Yes, I do, yeah. Where would be need a win against Casey? Casey obviously dropping that game surprisingly on the weekend by one point, so they'll want to bounce back. Who are you tipping for that one I'm, at Avalon Airport? Over? I'm tipping Casey, and in a strange one, I think Ben Brown being selected at AFL level mm. will make their VFL team better, um, and Wiedemann will cash in. Yep. Look for five goals plus from him. Footscray to extend their un 
defeated straight against Sydney. Yeah, going along just nicely, Footscray. Richmond against Collingwood. Richmond really need a win in the VFL. Get on the Craig Black and White. Uh, they're going really well. They'll get over the line. They're young talent. Uh, they're not physically ready for AFL football, the ones that are playing in the VFL. Um, but, but they're very, very good at the VFL level, and they'll be good AFL players in the future. Uh, and they've got a nice complement with some um, VFL-listed players. So they'll go to 6-2 and two and push further up the ladder. Can Curry Bird get two in a row against I, the Northern Bullants? I think I think they can. Northern Bullants with a with an unexpected chance for three wins in a row. But uh, Coburg at home, they play the last nine games of the season at Piranha Park after the renovation. So look for them to come home with a wet sail. And the Jake Batchelor coached Sandy Zebras to get yes. up over Essendon. Oh, I think so. They've got a nice little mix. If Dean Kent... Uh, is still in the Sandringham side. I think he'll be best on ground again, but don't be surprised if he's promoted to the Saints team. Perfect. Thanks, Mick. Thank you, John T. It's always a pleasure to be in the studio here, and thanks to Peter Susovich, who does all the work behind the scenes. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to this week's episode of VFL Update as well. Hopefully we see you down at the ground on Friday night. Hopefully Frankston can get the win and go 6-4, and four, and also Frankston's women's will be looking for their third win of the season on Saturday. So get down and support the Dolphins. Go Frankston. Go Dolphs!